The Felicia Show, where extraordinary people say extraordinary things. Life is tremendous. It's time to get rid of the baggage of 2002. We're talking to Dr. Dorian Will. Can we examine your brain? Dr. Corpus Niedlin. We tried to solve our problems with the wrong part of the brain. Dr. John Tibane. Take a step towards our destiny. And educational motivational speaker, Annie Leviton. We are what we believe we are. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Have a seat. Thank you. Life is tremendous. I'm talking about tremendous. Welcome. It's inspiration. It's inspiration 2004, and we're going to get rid of the baggage of 2003 and make that giant step to living a full, purposeful, rewarding life in 2004. We have invited four experts who are really going to change your life today. Listen, have fun, take notes, do whatever. But more importantly, we're all going to be positive after the show. Let's meet them. I'm talking about my friend, Dr. D, Dorian Hi. Will. Nice How to are you? Hello. <clears throat> Author, Quobus Nidling. Dr. Quobus Nidling, excuse yeah. me. Oh. That's a nice one, isn't it? Very good. I'll nice. tell you. And we're talking about my buddy here. Dr. John Tibanepshin. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just love how I can speak so many languages. Uh. <laughs> Finally, educational, motivational speaker. You've heard him on the show before. Annie Leviton. <laughs> Let's talk. Let's get rid of the baggage. The baggage of... 2003. I'm reading this book. I have to show you this book. I'm reading this book right now, entitled Life is Tremendous. And the author is right, really. I really believe life is tremendous. Last year was a tough year for me, and I'm determined this is going to be a great year for me. Is it all in the mind? Let's talk about it. Getting rid of the baggage. Let's start off with you, John. Yeah, definitely. Life is tremendous, and you are right. It's a mental issue. Mm -hmm. And I think that for us to really to get rid of the negativity, each time you start a year or you start any kind of a season, you need to redefine your possibilities. Mm -hmm. The problem is that many of us, we have been put in a box. I mean, imagine when you're conceived, you're in a box called a womb. When you're born, you're put in a bag and then your mother puts some blanket on you. That's another box. They put <laughs> you in, a, in a, some kind of box all the time. When you go to crutch or kindergarten, it's another box. You go to school, they give you a set of subjects, it's another box. And guess what? You get a job, they give you a job description, it's another box. <laughs> when you die, Felicia, go they put you in, in a another box. Box. as if that's not enough. That box <laughs> is put into another box. <laughs> now, you need to redefine your possibilities. The thing that makes us to be negative is that our possibilities have been defined by other people. Look at grain, for example. Let me define the possibilities of grain. Grain can be put in a sack to rot and be given to pigs as feeding. But it can also be ground into some powder and make bread and feed 10 people. But it can also be planted into the soil. It germinates, it gives to birth to some crop that will give birth to so many grain mm. and feed the entire nation. Mm. But you and me are different from the grain because we can define our own possibilities. Okay, let's, let's hear more because uh, this is really what we're doing yeah. right now. Getting people ready to forget about 2003 and go into 2004 charged. I've had that gut feeling for some time. It's going to be a really great year and I'm a gut feeling kind of person. Mm. You know, uh, to, to, to make this, to anchor this, we we born to pioneer. We're born to do that. That's why the first physical movements of a child is not to stay in the middle of the carpet, but is to go to the edge. Parents pull the child back. That's so we're born to do it. It's not something that we have to go get somewhere or to study for. It's inside of us. And we just have to recover it and say, it's mine. And, I, and, and let's make this, this year the, the, the year where we redefine. So next Monday, we say to ourselves, what was impossible this week that can become possible this week? Wow. Ani? Most of us are brought up in an environment of negativity. <clears throat> You've got people saying, don't do this, don't do mm. that. And by the time a child is four, 
it's heard like about a couple of hundred thousand no's and very few <laughs> yeses. And I think that we are only limited by our own possibilities. And if we realize the power of our mind and we set our goals, we can achieve anything that we want. Mm -hmm. Dorian? I agree with what the others have said, and I think that it's not, you know, it's interesting to me. Why is it that people have the same New Year's resolutions year after year after year? Why do they set the same goals? And I think if we take a little bit further what the people have said already in terms of possibility, think to yourself, what is the most important thing that I need to do that would change my life? And if you set one or two, maybe at the most three goals, and think to yourself not only that I would like to achieve it but if I had to achieve this how would my life be different and then the next step would be what price would I have to pay mm. because there's a matter of paying some kind of price for achievement as well then take a look at it and say to yourself if it's still that important to me if I still want to go for this thing then by when how where make to take the long-term goals and make them short-term goals mm. so that it's not just a pipe dream it's something that feels tangible that it's in your grasp that you can get on with and really do mm. I'm gonna ask you because we're going to go to break and I want to ask you all to really take this opportunity to talk to our to go and change people's lives right now those watching out there but I want you to talk about dreams I want you to talk about sense of urgency everyone says South Africans are hard workers but we don't have a sense of urgency I have this this uh, annoyance with slow people because I feel you know today is an opportunity after the break we're going to do just that don't go get rid of the baggage of 2003 and let's leapfrog into 2004 yes dr. D after the break <laughs> It took a long time to build up that baggage and sometimes it's going to take some time to get rid of it. It's Valentine's and we want you to come and share a wedding disaster that turned out happy ever after or turned out to be the worst day of your life. Call us right now on our new number 011-442-0300 or email felicia at iafrica.com. Felicia, where extraordinary people say extraordinary things. Phobias, an irrational fear, or are they real? Spiders, snakes, darkness, elevators, cats driving. What do the experts say? There's no such thing as a fear of flying. What frightened you? Your imagination. We don't have any control over it. My hands shake, I sweat. Fear of spiders, snakes. Three deep breaths. Can they be cured of their phobias? Catch the Felicia Show to find out. It's 2004 and we're trying to get rid of the baggage of 2003 and get into 2004 positively and more productively. True or false, you can be happy, involved, relevant, productive, healthy and secure in the midst of a high-pressured, commercialized, automated, pill-prone society. Can you? It's a tough world out there. There you are, Dr. D. Talk to them. Awareness is the first step to change. You talk about the baggage of 2003. Often that baggage of 2003 was the baggage of 2002 and 2001 and 2000 also. We've been carrying that baggage for a long time. And we look at ourselves and we wonder, why don't I feel in control of my life? Why am I messing up my relationships? Why do I make the wrong choices over and over and over again? Why do I say yes when I really really mean no? Why can't I be more assertive in the workplace? And very often the reason why comes from perhaps what the situation that you're in now, but baggage that you've been carrying for a long time, that you, messages that you give yourself, that I am not good enough, that my opinion doesn't count. When you are aware of what the obstacles are, what's been holding you back? So the first step I think, Felicia, is to stop, take stock, re-examine your goals. Where have I been? Where do I want to go? Where have I spent my energy? How, what direction do I want to take from now on? And the biggest question is, what do I think the obstacles are? Mm -hmm. What are the obstacles that are holding me back? Okay. And then begin to tackle them. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of just slick one-liners. There are many, and I'm perhaps am one also, but lots of motivational speakers who will say, give you a feel-good talk, mm -hmm. put a smile on your dial, kid, you know, or it's an mm -hmm. attitude of gratitude. Mm -hmm. It took a long 
long time to build up that baggage and sometimes it's going to take some time to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. But you've got to really want to and take that first step. And, and there are ways of doing it. And I've taken that first step. Um, I remember New Year's Eve, I know everyone was ringing the New Year, drinking and having fun. We sat, uh, my husband, my two daughters, quietly together, holding hands, saying the prayer of Jabez, and after that, uh, we all talk to each other about what bothers us about the other and how we can change it for 2004. But one thing I did say to my family, I said, let me be honest with you, I don't have time for negativity. Anyone who's going to really make life difficult for me is out of my life. It's as simple as that, because <laughs> I've made it clear. Mm -hmm. you know? But uh, we all were talking to each other, and I think that's what I'm asking you to do right now. Take that giant step. Don't be scared. Talk. Um, mm. What you call it? I'm very impatient about a lot of stuff. How can I work with that? You're impatient about getting things done or with people? What do you mean? Okay, oh, I'm very oh. worried, like, for example, um, I go to a church or so, mm -hmm. and I'm scared they don't come fetch me on time. I'm, I'm scared I'll be late for lots of things. <laughs> Let me ask you, all of those things that you're anxious about and that you're impatient about, do they happen or do they usually fetch you on time? Sometimes they're late, sometimes they fetch one time. And if they're late, what happens? Then I start phoning them, I'll say, where are you, please? You know, are you still coming to fetch me and all this? And if they're five minutes late, what happens to your life? Get uh, angry, be honest. No, I'm very negative, I'm very mm. negative. Then I like think, no, okay, let me go undress and go back to what I was doing. Okay, I think with you, what it's a matter of saying to yourself, what can I, what can't I control? You know, sometimes you can't control the other person or you can't control the traffic. Mm -hmm. What you can do is say, look, you know, it's important to me that you fetch me on time. After that, you have to just say to yourself, listen, you know, if, if they're five minutes or ten minutes late, it's really not going to change my life. Mm -hmm. Have a, you know, it's, it's easy to say to you sitting here, develop a more relaxed attitude. But if I say to you, does your life fundamentally change if other people don't do exactly what you're going to do? What changes is that you get yourself into a, an anxious state, a terrible state, mm -hmm. whereas it's the difference between choosing to react or respond. You can react and say, where the hell are they? They're late, they're destroying this, or people are waiting for me. Or you can say, I'm going to respond. I can't control it. I've done what I can. They'll get here when I can, and let me get a perspective on it. It's a matter of perspective. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you very much. Oh. In short, you have no control over people, but you have, a, you have control over what happens to you, mm -hmm. really. Between every stimulus and response, in other words, between anything that happens to you and how you respond is a gap. And in that gap, you have a choice. And instead of just reacting like this, you've got that little minute to say, how am I going to deal with this situation? And very often when you're aware that you have that kind of choice, you're able to calm yourself down, take a deep breath and often a offer a kind of productive response instead of a destructive Okay, we have many people watching here today quickly. Relationships. People are sitting in relationships that are not working, but they are just sitting in there for whatever ulterior motive. Talk about that. Well, you know, I think relationships are just the essence of, for a lot of people very, very central in our lives. And I think if you're in a destructive relationship, to be able to not sit and wait once again, every time you point a finger at him or her or luck or fate or circumstance, there are at least three that are pointing back to you. Mm -hmm. So start off by saying, I'm unhappy, I own the problem. If I own the problem, what can I do about it? We function a lot with myths, Felicia. We think if he or she loves me, they would know what I want. Mm. Isn't that ridiculous? That's People don't true. carry a little x-ray machine that sees inside <laughs> your head if they love you. What should be the case if they love you? They should want to understand you. They should listen to you. They need to respect what you say, but you have the responsibility. Before it gets to the point where you just explode of being able to say, I'm unhappy about this, this is what I like, this is what I need, instead of waiting for people to guess. Once the person has heard, you hope that they're going to act on it. If they don't, well, there's no point in knocking your head against a brick wall over and over and over again and wondering why it hurts. Mm -hmm. Then you've got decisions to make. You might decide, this isn't in the service of my soul. I need to either make the change or move on. Hmm. Perhaps you would want to say you're contented with your life. Yeah. And, and I could say to you, what are the things that are working? 
and how and what makes you so content with your life when so many other people are so unhappy, are, are so unhappy. Mm -hmm. what could you say about that um, the beautiest part is that i can say about my life is that from the time i got married right up till now as i stand here and what i've achieved in my life i'm grateful for that number one number two i've got many grandchildren i've got lovely children wow. i've got everything i want well due to that to get all that, I had to pray and I had to, you know, abide by the rules of my um, Islamic regulations. And thank God, mm. I've got my health and my sanity. I okay. applaud you for that. We really applaud you for that. I just love to have those positive people mm. around me. I called uh, Tokyo Sohan and I congratulated him. I said, congratulations, my brother. You're just soaring like a Concord. And mm. he said, yeah. but." Each time I listen to the phone and you've left a message, you make me soar even higher mm. and higher because you're so positive. I just wish to hear more from you. Well, so, you see, so that's Felicia, it. what mm -hmm. Tokyo was talking about, I think, is that, you know, we define success very often in such a narrow way. Mm. It's to do with either money or status or power. I liked her and success. Absolutely. I loved your success. And yours was to do with contentment mm. and relationships and a sense of fulfillment and meaning in your life mm. and I think that so many people often have to go through some kind of difficulty maybe crisis mm. to be able to step back and, and say, say gee mm. you know look at what I've got and these kind of things are successful it's not always the elusive goal it's often right there inside you and at your doorstep well thanks as usual Dr. D great as usual thank you and Love when we come good. back practical ways to use your total brain to get ahead that's good your friend stuff. Thank you. Well, <laughs> you've got to combine two things. You've got to combine what you're good at mm -hmm. with what your brain loves to do. For more information on The Felicia Show, visit www.feliciaonline.co.za. We're talking motivation, inspiration, and getting you really charged and ready for 2004. There is a quote I have on my cell phone message, and it's by Mahatma Gandhi. And it says, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. Are you fulfilling your purpose in life? Let us hear from Gubas Nedling on how to use your whole brain, your whole brain to get ahead. Let's hear it. Gubas, please join me. Have a seat. Talk to me. What does this total brain mean? What's this about using your whole brain? Are we using a quarter of our brain? Or whatever. <laughs> i tell you why, why this is so important for me and, and, and for, I, I think for everyone else out there is that often um, we try to solve our problems with the wrong part of the brain. It, it's like trying to choose a job when you, you're good at something. You, you choose... A, a, a job because you're good in bookkeeping so yeah. you become a bookkeeper yeah and so you start doing the job but you're not happy you, you, and, and and you can't get going the thing is that you've got to combine two things the, you've got to combine what you're good at mm -hmm. with what your brain loves to do mm -hmm. so but what we try to do is to to profile that to, to show you what your brain loves to do what you're good at when you start combining that then I think you get the perfect solution or close to the perfect solution mm -hmm. so that that to us is, is, is very very important and, and let, me, let me illustrate. Say, for instance, that um, you are this logical, rational kind of That's person. That's right. And mm -hmm. clinical kind of mm -hmm. person. And there's nothing wrong with that kind of person. So, and, and you love being involved in clinical, rational kind of stuff. Yeah. Then it would be good to find the skills and develop the skills within that quadrant of the brain. Because mm. that is the combination then. Then go out and do a job that requires that. Become an accountant or go out and, and be a chemical engineer or mm -hmm. a secretary where accuracy is involved and so on and so on. But you may be a totally different kind of person. You may hate details. You may have be this big picture kind of person that you. you Are you kind talking of, about me? I'm now? talking about you now. <laughs> I'm talking, really talking about you. When you don't worry about time yeah. and that kind of details, mm, whatever. Mm -mm. That's that's fine. So find yourself a job where you can strategize, where you can do that, but find yourself a backup team. You mm -hmm. know, as an author, for instance, mm -hmm. you know, to get an idea about a book, it's not a book. But you've got to start with that idea. So I can play around with ideas, but then I find people to join me to write the book with me. That's why people ask me, how is it possible to write more than 80 books? You know, <laughs> it's impossible. No, it's not. Nothing is 
Nothing is impossible. But you find people that together you form one good mm -hmm. brain. And that is how you form teams. That is, it's, it's, it's basically like a family. You, you're a father, mother, you've got two children. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you that those two children will be in different quadrants of the brain than you are. That for sure. Like for they talk about sure. four different personalities in four every family, kind of yes. in, a, in, a, in a work situation. Yeah. You have the thinker, who is the logical type. Yeah. You have the director, who is the bottom line type. Yeah. And I always use different names. Names when I use this, the thinker for me is like a. Einstein was a, was a, was a great uh, thinker. Yes. He was a, he was a, a, a. First of all, he was also a strategist, of course. That's but right. he was a great. He, he thought out well. You know, he was a deep thinker. A thinker is someone that wants to dig deeper. That's right. He wants to do research. So he wants it's to very logical. It, it was like opening up a machine and see what's inside of that machine. You can actually watch little children doing that. You can say, hey, hey, I can see that brain is now in action. Mm -hmm. So as a parent, you can watch the brain of your child in action and so on. And then the, are we yeah. talking about this office situation or even the home yeah. and then you have the director as we said the bottom line mm. person and you have the relator who is always Absolutely. concerned about ensuring that everybody is happy yes. in uh, the office or yeah. at home and then finally we have the socializer or the marketeer mm. the big picture person big picture who person. sells the passion is really to, to pursue the, as I said those two things mm -hmm. what you're good at and what you love and that can change and it's changing you know absolutely all the time mm. And this is what we're trying to say to you in 2004. Find your passion. Uh, that's another thing. Many people look for a job versus what they're passionate about. I want to talk a little bit, as we talk about finding your passion, productivity. You know, if people are enthusiastic about what they do, it really, they make the difference. The sense of urgency in your work informs you that yesterday is gone forever and tomorrow may never come but today is in your hands. Um, how do we teach people to understand that? You know, if you make your job important, everybody will consider your job important. It's, it's, it's also something that's called immediacy. Mm -hmm. That when, you, when I'm with you in this moment, yeah. I'm nowhere else, I'm mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. And that is when I serve a customer now, and you my customer, mm -hmm. I'm totally with you. My face, you know, in, in, in the face there are 44 muscles, mm -hmm. and only four of those muscles you need to eat 40 are expressions mm -hmm. so your face is showing something my face is showing mm -hmm. something and it can show you that i'm with you i'm mm -hmm. serving you mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking and and that uh, creates closeness mm -hmm. and so and that's what it what it really means mm -hmm. it's that immediacy live them that's what live the moment actually mm -hmm. means this. two people really that come to mind when you talk about people give you their 40 seconds or two mm -hmm. two minutes Bill Clinton and Nelson Mandela yes. apparently yes. are the champions at that. They are with you for that moment when they talk to you. Well, well you know, and that's special. That's really very special it's, because you go, you see what, what it does. You go away. I leave now in a couple of minutes that's now. That's right. I leave and I say, well, this was great. Felicia was a great girl, you know, wonderful. Our president, Thabo Mbeki, can be seen as the big picture type. Uh, He's, uh, yes. he's really big picture, he's the orator, yeah. he is the philosopher. So where do you put his brain? I think he would be in the top two. He would be that strategist kind mm -hmm. of person mm -hmm. and then also sometimes rational. He, come, right. he comes across rational the way that he, that mm -hmm. he expresses himself mm -hmm. and, and so on. So what he would need, he would probably need the backup in that interactive side and mm -hmm. so on to form that, like I need to, mm -hmm. to form that whole brain. Well, uh, last message to people for 2004 to really get them started. I believe for a long, long time that this country, and I'm, I'm not airy fairy or fluffy, this country offers more opportunities and possibilities mm -hmm. for people with fresh eyes. It's mm -hmm. really out there. Mm -hmm. If you have fresh eyes, you'll see it every day. So we've got to go for hope, and let's all of us be sellers of hope. That's it. And hope is your dream, selling your dream. Selling your dreams. Mm -hmm. After the break, changing negative thoughts and making sure 2004 is a positive year for you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you better be change friendly and embrace change because whether you like it or not, change will show up. Give your neighbor a high five and say high five. Call us with a story of the most gifted or dynamic young person you know. They must be extraordinary. For example, have they stopped hijacking or can they play a piano like Don Laka or Abdullah Ibrahim or have they invented something that's on the market? Are they great orators like Martin Luther King Jr.? 
Call us right now on 011 442 0300 or email felicia at iafrica.com. Felicia, where extraordinary people say extraordinary things. On the 31st of January, we'll be recording three shows, Valentine's Day, Divas from the 70s and 80s, and Gifted Young People. If you wish to be a member of the audience, call us on 011-442-0300 or email felicia at iafrica.com. It's time for changing negative thoughts and empowering ourselves with thoughts that are positive. Hanging around positive people, getting ahead in life and getting rid of that negative burden, that's what we're trying to do right now. Positive people know how to give credit where it is due, while little people are always pointing out negativity and blaming everyone else but themselves for their failures. Here comes Dr. John Tibani to get rid of that negativity. Right now, Dr. John Tibani. Look at him, He's, he has a sprint in him. He has a sprint in him. Oh, what are yeah. you doing? Hit it, hit it. I'm excited. Uh -huh. South Africa, what a privilege to be alive in the year 2004. Yes. I want us to celebrate the year 2004. The only way to stay positive is to have an attitude of gratitude. Be thankful that you are alive. But you know what, talking of celebration, a group of young people some many years ago came together and they designed a slogan, which is high five. Mm. Now this slogan was a symbol of celebration, celebrating victory. What the young people never told us was, what are these five things? that they are busy giving each other. <laughs> when we assume that, of course, they are referring to the five fingers in your hand, but I would like to suggest five things that you really need to take. The first thing that you need to take, you need to take stock. It's important for you to take stock of yourself because that helps you to know who you are. You see, if you don't know who you are, people will tell you who you are not. And unfortunately, <laughs> if you believe them, you will become the person that you are not born to be. In fact, you will become the product of other people's opinions of you. And that is dangerous, ladies and gentlemen, mm -hmm. because you see, even in my life, the reason why I left medical practice, many people ask the question, why did you study medicine and work for, for seven years and all of a sudden you quit medical practice? It's because I became a medical doctor for wrong reasons. I was good in science subjects and everybody said, you must become a medical doctor. <laughs> my teacher said, you are so good in mathematics, go and become a medical doctor. And guess what? I worked for seven years as a GP, I was never fulfilled. I made lots of money, but I was never fulfilled. Why? I was the product of other people's opinions of me. Mm. But guess what? Right now, I've taken stock. I know who I am. I am a speaker, and that's all I do. So I enjoy myself. So it's important for you to take stock of yourself. But the most important reason why you need to take stock is this. What you already have could be key to what you don't have. Many of us, we go out there looking for good things, better things, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you do it at the expense of what you have, guess what, if you neglect what you have, you lose it. So give your neighbor a high five and say, take five. Take five. Yeah, <laughs> take five. Now the second thing that you need to take, you need to take a stand in life. You need to take a stand. Now why must you take a stand? It's because he who stands for nothing will fall for anything. A young girl of 16 who stands for nothing, she will fall for anything, including a BMW that passes by and a credit card that is waved in the air. A young boy of 14 or 16, if he stands for nothing, will fall for anything, including drugs that passes by. Mm -hmm. So it's important for us to begin to stand for something. But you see, it's not only the young ones. Even people of 40 and 50 and 60, we do fall for things. Why? Because we stand for nothing. Now, standing for something means you need to have values. Values that you live by principles that guide you. And these are the things that are going to keep you in a certain world where you can stay positive all the time. You see, the principles that you live by, they shape the world that you live in. Yeah. Now, I believe that South Africa and the entire continent Africa, we need to begin to cultivate those values that are going to underpin how our people are going to function in this world. Unfortunately, many of us, because we don't have these values, we fall for anything. Give your neighbor mm -hmm. a high five and say, take yeah, five. There take we, five, finish take up. Five. <laughs> yes, having taken stock and having taken stand, you now need to take the third thing, and this is so crucial. You need to take a step.
Your success is in the future. Now you need to take a step towards your future. Your promised land is stationary somewhere. It's not coming to you. You must go to it. Some things will never move in your favor until you make a move. And this is so crucial. I'm sure you have seen these electric sliding doors mm -hmm. in these big shopping malls and big buildings. Mm -hmm. Guess what? These sliding doors are always closed <laughs> until a human being takes a move. Takes a, move. Takes a step. And <laughs> guess what? When you move forward, the sliding doors, they slide open, open. for you, mm -hmm. but only for the human who is in motion. That's now, if you have been standing there all <laughs> the time, complaining about the weather, complaining about apartheid, complaining about everything <laughs> all over, about God and all other things. Yeah. Guess what? Some things will never move in your favor until you make a move. And many of us in South Africa, we may be having this sense of entitlement. You know, mm. it belongs to me. Mm. You know, even if it belongs to you, some things will never move in your favor until you make a move. Even that promotion that may be really belonging to you, you may not get it until you have the ability to negotiate for it and make a move and take a step to your future. Mm. May you do this for me, please, everybody? Let's see. Yeah. Do this a little harder, faster, harder, faster. Now, what do you feel? Air. Now you feel some air, and guess what? You never created that air. That air has been there all the time. But guess what? You never experienced that air until you did something. You see, around Felicia here, there's lots of money. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm there's, 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 there's lots of money. But until you do something, you will never experience that money. South Africa is full of wealth oh, and prosperity. That's true. But until South Africans do something, mm -hmm. they will never experience the wealth and the prosperity. Give your neighbor a high five and say, take five. Take five. The fourth thing that you need to take, you need to take shape. It's either you shape up or ship out. And guess what? There are many people who are shipping out of life. You know, the journey that this country and this continent, for that matter, has taken, which is a journey of transformation, it needs people with the right shape for it. If you don't have the right shape, you will ship out of the journey of success. I'm talking about your mindset. I'm talking about your attitude. If you don't have the right attitude, mm. you will never succeed. Cool. I always say that you can never climb the ladder of success dressed in a costume of failure. And once again, that costume is not a physical apparel, but your attitude. Mm. And I know, of course, according to Felicia, even the physical apparel is important. Oh, yeah. I always talk with her all the time. <laughs> Look at you, you right? Know, that is job. why, you know, and it's so important because you see, you need to dress the way you want to be addressed. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you want to be addressed in the year 2004? Dress for it. So we need to take shape. But taking shape means we must be prepared to change because change is no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who you are. It does not respect your religion. It does not respect the color of your skin. Change will always come. If you don't manage change, change will mismanage you. And when you are mismanaged by change, you are thoroughly being mismanaged. And you become the victim of change. And this country, I know for sure, there are many people who refuse to change. There are those who resist change. And unfortunately, the energy that you use to resist change is the very energy that you are supposed to use to create your own future. Mm. So you better be change friendly and embrace change because whether you like it or not, change will show up. Give your neighbor a high five and say high five. High five. And the last thing that you need to take for you to stay positive in the year 2004, you need to take a seat. The word seat there is a very symbolic word and it's a very important one. I believe that all of us were born for a purpose. We were born for a reason. And when you find your purpose, it's almost like you have found your throne. And when you sit on that throne, you feel like a king and you feel like a queen. But unfortunately, many of us are fiddling with other people's thrones. And guess what? You will never be a king seated on another man's throne. Mm. You will never be a queen seated on another woman's throne. How can you think positively whilst you are seated on another person's throne? But what I like about kings and queens is that when they sit on the throne, they don't sit to relax. They sit to reign. Mm. They sit to rule. Mm. Felicia found her throne some years ago, and she's seated on that throne, and she's ruling, and she's leading in her throne. It's important for each one of us, if we really want to be positive all the way, we need to find our purpose in life. Mm. And this is how I suggest we celebrate the year 2004. Yeah, well, Take yeah. Wow. Yeah.
as usual. Unbelievable. Thank you. Did you hear, people? Just be positive. That's all I think you're trying to say. Yep. Just be positive, because if you're positive, you're able to leapfrog. Okay. You have some books here. Oh, yeah, I just want to give to uh, our wonderful... All that you just heard, yeah. you're going to get all uh, these books. Well, there you are. So those who are in front, they always get the books. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. yeah, Thank you. yeah, yeah. When I grow up, I'm going to be like you. <laughs> we must live in the now. Plan for the future, but to live in the moment. To live in the now. Phobias, an irrational fear, or are they real? Spiders, snakes, darkness, elevators, cats driving. What do the experts say? There's no such thing as a fear of flying. What frightened you? Your imagination. We don't have any control over it. My hands shake, I sweat. Fear of spiders, snakes. Three deep breaths. Can they be cured of their phobias? Catch the Felicia Show to find out. It's 2004 and we're trying to get you charged and ready for this year and to take on the year with great enthusiasm because I'm reading this book. I don't know who this author is, but I just love it. Life is tremendous and I'm feeling that way. I'm feeling that way. I want to talk about dreams before I introduce our next speaker. And, uh, you know, uh, I refer to dreams again, Reverend Katidi, because... We have young people growing around us, and they have dreams, but somehow we don't realize that teachers, parents, we can kill a dream. Uh, Charlie Jones, the author here, says, don't let anyone kill your dream. A new idea is delicate. It can be killed by a sneer or a yawn. It can be stabbed to death by a joke and worried to death by a frown on the right man or woman's brow. You know, a child comes and tells you, I want to be an astronaut. And you say, and the poor child's dream is killed. Let us say to parents, if our kids are beginning to dream, let's encourage them and say to, to them, you must always have it, a, a space in your heart to dream and you will go far. Because even if there are hindrances in your life, if you've got a dream, you'll go far. You'll take those hindrances to be stepping stones to glory. I just have to read this quote because it really is the ultimate on dreams. It says, always dream and shoot higher than you know you can reach. Don't bother. Just be better than your contemporaries and predecessors. Try to be better than yourself. That's all I'm going to say. Try to be better than yourself. Our final expert to get us off to a great start in 2004 is internationally acclaimed speaker, Annie Leviton. Annie is going to tackle the issue of developing a sense of urgency. Annie, how are you doing? Hello, Felicia. How are you? Right. Come and stand right here because, you know, as I said, I'm reading this book here. Life is tremendous. And this author says, he says, uh, I believe that the fires of inspiration and greatness in our hearts can be kept burning only by developing a sense of urgency and importance in our work. Right now, to tell people, stop sitting on the phone with personal calls. Get going. Make your job important. You know, make, walk with a sense of urgency. And sometimes I remember when I was at SA, people would go to the bathroom and... And I'm looking at them. I said, look like you're working, even if you're not working. Walk with a pen and a book in your hand. And, and you're gossiping. Hey, Manjun, did you see what happened over the weekend? And, um, and did you see what uh, that uh, this is? Uh, and you're gossiping about something. But look like you, you go to the toilet with a sense of urgency, with a book, with a pen. Make it look. When you get to work, you know, talk with a sense of urgency. No, I will, no, you know. Uh, what is happening? That's what I want you to talk about, honey. Get us going. I'm worried. And I'm worried we're a great country. <coughs> Lee Ayakoko was responsible for turning around one of the biggest motor industries. He wrote a book called Fire in the Belly. Mm. And you have to have that sense of urgency of fire in the belly to achieve with whatever you want. Yeah. To. <laughs> William James, who was the father of modern American psychology, made a statement, which I believe is the most important thing I've ever heard. <coughs> and he said, man by changing the inner attitudes of our mind, 
can alter the outer aspects of our life. And therefore, we are what we believe we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we can change the way that we believe. Felicia spoke about dreams. I would just like to tell you a story called the Dream Stealer. In a particular school in America, in Colorado, a young fellow was in standard seven and or grade nine. And the teacher said to the whole class, I would like you to write a story about where you see your future, how you see yourself, what you intend to become. And a particular chap put his heart and soul into this and he got his, he's got his essay back and it said, F, see me after school. And he went to the teacher and he said, how can you give me an F? I've put my whole life, my whole passion, my whole fervor into this. This is what I believe. And she said, you know, you're a kid from the wrong side of the street. Your clothes are clean, but they're torn. You haven't got money. You live from a bro in a broken home and you're living in a caravan. And your dream is to have a home of 1,000 acres and have one of the greatest horse ranches in America. How does a kid like you get to a dream like this? And you know what land cost you? She said to him, I'm doing you a favor. You'll never get it, so I don't want you to get hurt. Change your essay and I will give you an A. So he went home and he went to his dad and explained the whole story to his dad and his father said to him, I can't tell you what to do, but whatever decision you make, mm -hmm will affect you for the rest of your life. Mm. So he thought about it and he went back to school and he handed the essay back to the teacher. He said to her, you can keep your F and I will keep my dream. Wow. <laughs> wow. But the true react the actuality of the whole situation was that many years later, the man today holds a farm of 1,200 acres in Colorado. Wow. He has some of the finest horses and it's a research equine center. So our dreams can come true. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And what I would like to say to you, forget the past. The past is not your future. The past is not your potential. What has happened has happened. And we must live in the now. Plan for the future, but to live in the moment, to live in the now. Because if you, living in the past dilutes the present and it takes us away and we don't know where we are. And living in the future dilutes it even more. So we really need to take stock to live in the moment and to have a purpose. We must have that fire in the belly. Mm -hmm. And this is what is keen. And each and every one of us, each of us, has this dynamism within us. And how do we do it? You need to set a goal, whether you're at school, whether you're going to into a relationship with your in business. And your goals must be clear, but they must also be measurable. Okay, what I'd like you to say, just do that and say, I am great. I am great. Yeah, well. Thank you, Annie. Again, Annie, as, as usual, very good. But I think what I like is the importance of seeing posit positive even in things that happen to us that seem to be negative. As I said, I was reading this book, and one area that was quite interesting, he says um, there were two soldiers uh, who, uh, I'm sure they've been punished or something, but anyway, they had to be taken to the army guard house. One said to the other, how long are you in for? And he says, 30 days. And uh, what did you do? He says, I was absent without leave, A war. Okay, how long are you in for? He says, uh, the other one says, I'm in for three days. He says, what did you do? He says, I murdered the general. He says, mm, how come I get 30 days and you get three days? He says, because I'm going to be hung on the third day. <laughs> so he's so positive, even in a negative. And I think all I'm trying to say is that we should start seeing positive even in negatives. When your boss calls you, most of the time people say, oh my God, what does he want? What? Funny enough, when my boss calls, I'm not going to lie, I am excited. In fact, I want that call, regardless of what the communication is going to be about. And yesterday, as he called, I was reading this book, and I was reading a part here that says, when the boss calls, everybody seems to worry about, oh my God, why is he calling? I've had enough of this person. But I understand one thing, they put bread on my table. So that is why I jump and I 
Call it back up, suck up. I enjoy it, but with dignity. That is important. You do it with dignity. If I make my job, my boss's job easier, he or she enjoys working with me. And that's one thing we need to understand. I wish I had more time, and I really wish we could uh, do more with you, but I really feel you must have learned something from what you just heard today. I am charged, and I'm ready to go. I have been able to get rid of the baggage of the past, and I'm ready to take on. Take on 2004. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Always dream and shoot higher than you can and reach for the stars. Don't bother. Just do better than your contemporaries, as I said earlier, your predecessors. And uh, more importantly, as a friend of mine from Palmetto said, I compete against myself and I win. Until next time, be positive. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.